Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. It's 10 after 3 on Friday, May 7th. I apologize. We were sidetracked getting ready for our online sale and lost track of time here. I'm not sure if anyone will have a chance to hop on with me this afternoon, but I promised I would come today and show you guys how I did this card. And uh, last week when I said I would be back today, I wasn't thinking about the time that our sale goes live tonight. So I had to change the time in order to still come to you. And so that's why I'm here this afternoon instead of this evening. But hopefully some of you will get to join me to see what we're doing here to create this card. I will leave the replay up so you can still watch it later, even if you don't get a chance to hop on this afternoon. And while I give you guys a chance to hop on, I just thought that I would see if anybody has any requests to see product from the new catalog. So if you are here and there's anything that you want to see in particular, I can answer if I have it and I will pull a few things out from my box that just arrived early this afternoon, late this morning of some of the new products that were not on pre-order. Um, for those of you who have your catalog, what are you excited to see? Hi, Leslie. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Sandy. Some of it might even be a surprise for me because I placed my order so quickly the other day that I wasn't actually completely sure whether I did indeed add some certain things that I wanted or not. So this is a true unboxing. I've never done an unboxing before and this is legitimately unboxing. I just opened the box and I have not even taken these things out myself. So I'll show you guys a few things. I'm going to move these a little bit out of the way and then we'll pull those back in when I make them. Do you guys wanna see some new things? Here is the checks and dots embossing folder. So these are like the ones we had in the holiday catalog that are a little bit bigger than a half size embossing folder. So those will be fun. Uh, let's see what else there is. I will have likely lots of puffin stamp sets in this order for the puffin party. We've got these cute um, in color gems from last year's in colors, but they're in square in two different sizes. Those are cute. These I cannot wait to play with. I'll open these guys up. This is the Soft Pastels Assortment. These are easily overlooked in the new catalog. I didn't actually notice that they were there myself until a friend pointed them out. So let's dig in and see what these look like. I'm going to have to learn how to use them and then come back and teach you guys. So those are the colors they come in. I have no idea what to do with these or how they work. So that's gonna be a learning curve. Do any of you know, have you used these before? Here's another stamp set, Biggest Wish. That one, I may plan an event around coming up. Who would like to see projects done with that one? Let's see what this die is. Oh, and picture this. I don't know if Heather's here, but I know Heather wants these. These are the ones that make a really fun shaker card. You can put different images in these different openings and uh, cut all that at once in a card front and then put little characters in there. The puffins would look really cute with that. For these guys, you can pair the peekaboo farm with these peekaboo dies. What else is in here? What are you hoping to see in here? Yeah, Wendy, you can color with those. I'm so excited and I, you're gonna have to teach me maybe. I can't wait to see what you do with those. Soft Pastels Assortment, and I like those colors. And then I have another fun bundle that came here. This one I cannot wait to make something with. Turtle Friends, and it's a punch. I love a punch. They are so convenient. Speaking of shakers, I have some fun new embellishments. 
we are okay first you have to wait how to use learn how to use them we've got some new shaker shapes so those will be fun to use even with those puffins as well maybe even with the turtles so those are adorable i have actually some of all of the embellishments here because i did my embellishment share order so it will be lots of fun to see all of the embellishments as I pack for the shares. Paper shares have now arrived, so I'll be busy prepping those as well. We've got Brad's again. We have a fun new set of spinner dies that I'll be using with my stamp club this month. So I ordered these so that we could make spinners. The little itty bitty round ones, they'll be good for that. open up a pack of paper and masks. Hopefully this isn't boring, you guys. I hope you're excited to see some of these things. Sorry, it means that you actually have to put up with the opening of the wrapping as well. So here's these, uh, here I'll flip this pack of paper over and we can see it sort of against there. There's those fun shapes. Sandy, so do you mean just the turtle as opposed to the builder, like the circles on there? If that's what you mean, I agree. I think that that would be nice so that you don't have those two little holes. There are some flowers. I don't know what this is actually called, scallops or fancy fan. We had one similar that was called fancy fan. That's fun. I love masks, so those will be fun to play with. And I will actually have to come back and announce the draw for last week's sharing. I didn't actually, with our being sidetracked, getting stuff ready for the sale, I didn't do that draw, but I will. Now I will share this paper with you guys. This looks fun. I like the colors in this one. I can't remember if it coordinates with a bundle. If it does, oh, I think it's the one that's macrame or something like that. I don't have that bundle yet, but I thought that the DSP was fun, so I ordered it anyway. Package for myself and a package for the paper shares. Yeah, I agree. That would be super useful with the dragonfly and the dog. So this is a nice pattern with all the succulents on the other side. I will try to not bring these too close to the screen. I find certain patterns when they're too close to the screen, they make you dizzy. So I'll also try to move a little slower so that they don't make you feel dizzy watching. This will be a favorite, the brick wall. Push that back in slowly, all those leaves. Oh, here's another fun one, some wood grain. And then this one here. You guys will have to tell me what your favorite pattern is and whether you like the sort of neutral side or the um, leafy side. It looks a little blurry. Do you guys see things clearly or more blurry? Perhaps it's just when I move the DSP, it looks like it's cleared up a bit. There's the brick wall and some more green. I won't show you all of the DSP or we could be on here forever, but this one is the first package that was in my, the top box. And then this one's really nice too. Just nice and simple. I don't know what you guys, sometimes I have a hard time knowing what to do with these ones where the pattern is split. It would be a good one for card fronts and then you don't feel so bad cutting it down for a card front. All right, so that's that package. I'll pull a few things out of the next box, but I won't make you watch everything. That might not be very fun. This next one is in color club, so we'll skip that one. Because you've seen most of that, or you will see some of it while I make this card. Here's these give it a whirl dies. That's the spinners. We'll open that up and take a quick peek. And then the peach dies. And then maybe we'll move on to
to other things. But I'll find that peach PSP here. Okay. That turtle is very cute. I cannot wait to do something with the turtle. All right, so I'm going to give these peekaboo frames for anyone who didn't see that. If you're just joining, I'm going to give these to Ethan to close up. That is the one that goes with the peekaboo farm. And then we'll move the turtle and friends out of the way. And then I've also got the biggest wish will move out of the way, but this one is really fun. You can pair the thanks with the thanks and do layered greetings. That one I'm excited to play with. Now let's see what's in Give It A Whirl. This one might not have been first on my list, but we had a fun, or I had a fun spinner planned for my stamp club and I was going to do it just with regular dies and then this was in the catalog, so it was kind of meant to be. It looks adorable. Look at all those clouds. I don't know if you guys can see that from that far away, so I'll bring it a little closer. And the stars, this will be fun. And then all of these other elements. I didn't realize that this piece here was actually the card front all cut in one. I thought I had to position the circle to cut the little side opening so that you can spin. How smart. That'll make cutting that easier. I like it. All right. I'll give these over to Ethan. There we go. Move these out of the way. Wendy, these should stay on the top of my pile. <laughs> All right. Peaches. This is called Peach Dyes. Um, the last one, Lena, was, I'll just get the name for you, of the spinner one. I think that's what you mean. That is called Give It a Whirl and it makes a spinner card. Now here's the peaches. So there are some little peaches, the larger one, different size leaves, some branches, I'm guessing those go with this. I didn't honestly look very closely when I ordered it, I just ordered the sweet, so. And we've got little flowers that will coordinate with those, I'm sure. This one looks fun. And I love the font on there. Oh no, the pastels, Wendy, or the spinner? Which one are you annoyed you didn't find? It's like a surprise every time you go through the catalog, something new pops up. I don't know which of you guys heard me say this, but even with the catalog that just retired, there were still things popping up at me in the last week that I didn't know how I missed the whole year that we had the catalog. Okay, so here's the Peach DSP. This DSP is actually called you're a peach designer series paper. So this one's nice. I love, yeah, oh no. This one's cute. I love small patterns like that. So that one is going to be a favorite for me. Oh, the blue is pretty. This reminds me of, oh. The branches of the. Where was that place? Where did we go? Positano. Positano. <laughs> in Italy when we were there on the incentive trip a couple years ago. That is where this one takes me back to, though I couldn't remember the name. And I love this pattern. I think that was what it was called. And then we've got this one. I love the stripes. Those will be another favorite. Those are pretty. More stripes. I'm a sucker for stripes, but I do actually really like this one. So this will be one of those ones that it's hard to decide which pattern to go with. I don't know if you guys find that. I love it when I only like one side of the DSP because then it's not a hard choice. Oh, this is a favorite. And then there's one more. I would really like this one too. The back is okay, but I love this one. All right, what do you guys think of that DSP? I'll let you stick, oh, right here, I'll give this to you. All right, pass these things over to my unofficial assistant. 
that wasn't uh, intentionally what he was doing here, but he's here, and so he's being put to work. And I think this DSP, or this ribbon, I mean, may, maybe it goes with that. I'm not totally sure. There's a couple different ribbons that would go well with that. So I can't wait to get into all of this ribbon and prep it for all of the shares. That will be fun. Here's another one. I'm sure any of these would go well with that peach line. All right. Okay, so I will get you to slide these out of the way, Ethan. All right. So I will show you guys. Hi, Marsha. It's peachy. <laughs> I like that, Michelle. Um, I'll show you guys one more time. I may end up with one last order going in in case anybody wants to do the puffin party and get in on that one. I posted the uh, last call as well as the final card the other day for this. So this is the final set of three. So we used each of the, or I used each of the puffins and pulled them all together for this set. And if you guys missed the video this guy is on a wobble I almost called it a spinner but that is a wobble and then there is the DSP so you will get a six by six of each of these DSP you will also get a half a package of twine which is just it would be some of each of these colors here so that is what is included with the Puffin Party. The supplies to make two of each card, the six by six of the paper. You'll choose which paper and which twine you want to put on your cards in class. And then there's an extra fun little surprise that I have coming for people who are taking that class. I can't wait for that part. It's always so exciting. I was looking at packaging yesterday and can't wait to put them all together. So. This is May 25th. If you want a last minute spot, it is $50. I would need to know this weekend so that it can be here in time. So just message me or you can go back to the post where I did the last call and there's a registration link there as well. All right, we also have our um, online clear out sale starts tonight at six. So if you are looking to purchase retired product, then you can let me know and I can add you into the page. So just either comment here or send me a message that might even be faster than me going through the comments after. And then I will probably come back with all the other upcoming information just so that we can get into making the card. All right, so have any of you done this technique before with the alcohol on vellum? This was my first time playing with this. My friend Diana sent me a link on how she did this. I didn't get to read fully through it, but I had seen little bits and pieces of how she had done it. So I put it together, but I will go back and watch her video as well in case there's any other extra tips for you guys. But I'll show you what I did. And hopefully it's something that you guys will give a try. I had lots of fun doing this. And when I first started, I wasn't sure if the card was going to turn out like I wanted it to. But by the end, I was really happy with it. So... I hope you guys are as well. So I'm gonna move these aside. I'll keep one here so that you guys can see what I'm going for. And I'll show you the supplies that I have to create this card. So I have used, um, just missing one border. So I'll have to grab that, but I've got a thick white card base. I have a white layer that I put behind the vellum just so that I had something to attach the vellum to and wrap everything around because you know how if you put adhesive behind vellum, it often shows through. So the extra pieces are there kind of to disguise that. So I have the piece of vellum that I'm going to do the technique with. I've textured a piece of the new Fresh Freesia with the Tasteful Textile my new go-to. It's got to replace the subtle embossing folder. This is from the Meadow dies. 
and then this one is as well this little tag I'm using the for you from the hydrangea stamp set in the spring catalog it does carry over into the annual but that way I felt it was pretty generic I didn't have to worry about what the occasion was and I have this little quarter circle punch and that is to hide behind the butterfly for when I put my blue daughter a dimensional there so that's what that's for and I have two of these butterflies I only need one but I kept one so that you could see and be cautioned about how to use the shimmer vellum so there is a shimmery side it's probably really hard to tell in the video but there's one side I don't know if the light will catch this for you guys to see and what I see is a little bit behind so you guys can let me know if you can tell whether it's shimmery or not but this side is shimmery and this side is not so you want to just make sure when you are cutting the butterfly or whatever image you're cutting that you cut with the shimmer side facing up so just be cautious of that we've made that mistake a few times and the scallop trim here is this one I love this one it is from the I think they're called contour I always want to call them scallop contour but oh they are scallop contours so it is from this die set I have not yet transferred this to a magnet sheet but I just wanted to show you guys this this is the set we're featuring with my in color club this month and that nice scallop stitch scallop is from here so it's already been getting a workout that in the cloud die that you guys have seen me use a few times and then this one is from my meadow just meadow dies and they're not all on here there are more that go with this but I've been using those already too so they are on a magnet sheet for projects in progress so that is from there all right so I will jump into putting this together I just need to check I don't think oh you know what this piece will actually work this piece that I have of scallop here it is not cut exactly to size but I can do that while I am assembling I just need to grab my small little cutter which I do not have handy and I usually do all right so, Here's the draw. Um, I will show you guys what I did here to create this background. So you might be able to see this little plate I have here. And you don't have to have a plate like this. You can just use a tray or whatever. This was just what was quickest for me to grab while we were in a scramble to make it on here. So I just have something to pour rubbing alcohol into. So this is 99%. If you have the 70% at home, it will not work. You've got to have something 90% or higher. This is just what we had at home. So that's what I'm using. I do have a team member who tried it with the 70% and said that it did not work. So if you are going to give this a try, just be cautioned on that so that you don't get frustrated when it doesn't work for you. So I've got that handy and I have all of the in color blends. So this one we this project i made it for the you can create a challenge that we offer i'm on that design team and our challenge for the month was to use we had vellum in our quarterly extras package and white cardstock in there and then for this month we had shimmer vellum and the in color cardstock so this was what i came up with i wanted to feature all of the in colors so I, that's why I came up with the set of five. So I've featured all of the in colors of cardstock and vellum and then the blends as well with this technique. So that's what that project was created for. So I took the dark blend of each of the five colors. So I'll just put the light one aside. I should have had these opened but I had put them back in the package when they weren't yet current. I made these before this stuff went live. So I just put everything back away so that it didn't come into my new inventory or new collection of products. All right. 
So I'm going to put the rubbing alcohol into my plate just so that it is handy. I will grab myself a paper towel. I just used a plastic tray when I did this, when I designed these for the project. And then you need some parchment paper. There's different ways to do this as well. This is just the way that I did this. But I have um, seen people do this or heard of people doing this with a straw and blowing the alcohol around. This is just the way that I did this one. All right, so paper towel. I am going to start with the light and work my way to dark. And actually the pink ends up darker than the purple, but that's okay. So I'm going to color with the brush tip on one side of the vellum. So I did roughly about that much of each color. I did not go straight to the ends. I kept the coloring a little bit to the inside of the edge of the paper. And I'm going to go a little further with the purple. I can already tell that my green is going to be really thick at the bottom. So I'm going to go a little thicker with the purple. I should have done larger portions of the pale papaya and the polished pink, but that's okay. There's lots of purple there. So now I'll bring in some soft succulent. This color I love. And then I've got some evening evergreen. And now this one's super dark with all of this, but again, it's not gonna go all the way to the bottom. So I'll keep that one a little thinner. And some of it will be hidden behind my border there. Anyhow, so that's okay. Now I'm gonna move this just a little bit so that I don't, when I'm pouncing on here, I don't splash up onto that because I like this card how it is. I don't want to end up splotching all over it. It looks a little blurry on my end. Hopefully you guys aren't seeing things super blurry. There, seems to have cleared up some. Maybe that's because I was the coloring motion, it was hard to focus. Okay, so now again, this is for anyone who's just hopping in, it is 99% alcohol, it is not the 70%. The 70% will not work. And then I'm just gonna ball this up. So you saw me rip apart my parchment paper and the reason I did that, this is something that I just did on my own. I don't know if this is the recommended method, it's just, what I found worked because when I was making these, I did multiples. And if I started here and worked my way down and then went on to the next piece for the next card, I would end up pouncing green ink into the orange and pink. And I didn't want to do that. So I kept one that I used on all of the lighter colors up top. And then I did another little ball that I used on the darker colors at the bottom so that they wouldn't mix. So hopefully that makes sense. So what I am going to do here is just, that's just crumpled there. And this is to give a little bit more texture so that it's not just a smooth dollop of there. Like you want it to be a little bit textured. So I'm just pouncing that in the alcohol on the plate here. And you can see it's just pooling up on there. I'm trying to do the lighter colors at the top first. You want enough alcohol that it's going to pool and mix there. And then now I'm going to work my way down into the purple, the fresh freesia. I don't want to let that set too quickly, or I don't want to give it too long that it's going to set before I get to the green. So I want to be ready. And if you were doing lots of these, you could even have two different trays so that the alcohol doesn't have your ink mixed into it. I need to move that a little bit further. You can see why I am making a mess here. So, and you could mix the colors if you want. I just wanted them to sort of stay in their color blocking while I was, and some do splash up if you're not careful. All right, now if you wanted to continue from here, 
you could take a straw or if you have uh, one of the old spritzer tools and you can just blend that around a little bit if you like to give it a little bit more blurred edges and then I'm just going to turn that and then you can give it some direction with where the color goes here we go The lines were a little too straight, so I blew some of the green or the orange back into there so that it had a little bit more interest. So I'll just give that a minute to dry. And while it dries, I will wipe up the color from my table. And perhaps I shouldn't have wore a white t-shirt today because I do now have green polka dots on my shirt. So to clean this mess up, I'm just putting some of the rubbing alcohol in a paper towel, put the cap on my rubbing alcohol, saying that because I didn't the other day and I, well, actually I, I did, but I had first put rubbing alcohol in the cap. I was doing something else with it, a different technique. And um, I got my card. You guys probably all saw that and were like, no, move it out of the way. At least it's an easy fix. I can just peel this layer off my white card base and um, pop it onto a new one. So that will be a simple fix. But that teaches you the importance of trying to keep this flat while you are cleaning up your work surface. I don't know if this is wet enough still for me to try to direct that back in but I'll try just so it doesn't look like it dripped off the edge so much. So when you set this aside, don't put it on top of a project. That's not so good. Again, it'll be an easy fix. I'll just take it off, but you can see how quickly that dries. When I did the set of five, I just set them aside and let them all dry. Or you can take a heat gun and speed it up that way too. All right, so we'll move this tray of rubbing alcohol so that I don't spill that anywhere. And we'll move these because those still have some wet color on those. And I don't want to end up with that all over my project. And I will actually heat set that just a little bit so that it's dry. Maybe I should have done that first and then the colors wouldn't have ran off the top, but it does look really nice with gold leafing, Lena. I did some just playing around before I actually saw this technique done. I was just playing with all kinds of different backgrounds when I was putting ink on my blocks and then setting it with rubbing alcohol. And I used some gilded leafing and it looked really fun. I did that on some shimmer cardstock I think too but I've since seen people do it intentionally or more intentionally than I set out to and it's so pretty I'm just going to keep that from the other side now and see if I can get that curl to relax some so I tried the gilded leafing with Tombow and it was a little thick I found so if you guys, um, I have a friend who used a different glue, so I'm going to have to give that a try. But if you guys have any suggestions on applying the gilded leafing, I would love to hear them. Okay, so that is dry. So now it's super simple from there. So there's not a lot of work to this card. That was the most work. I think it's still going to look okay, even though I, the pink and purple really blended together without the marbled look but it'll still look good once it's on here and you get the little bit of contrast from the white behind it. I think it is still all right. Okay, so what I did here was I attached my flower to this layer with mini dimensionals. So I started with that and you will see why in a minute. So 
So I'm just going to put about three of these on the back of here. And I'm being extra generous with these because this is going to be the bulk of what holds this down. You'll, you'll understand that in a minute. And then I put half size dimensionals behind the flowers and the little chunk of leaves there. these mini dimensionals. So this is going to be positioned about here and it's okay that the stem is not attached yet. I am not going to dimensional the stem. That is just too tricky to do. So I will leave that and then from here what I did was I used my glue dots and I placed them on the back of the vellum where the mini dimensionals are. So this way these glue dots are strategically hidden and sort of scattered throughout the vellum. So I put one behind that flower and with it being vellum, you can just see right through it so that if you're placing them right where the dimensionals are. You know that they're going to be behind where the flower is that way. And then from the front, you don't see all of those glue dots. So I'm only going to attach that so far. There will be a little bit more adhesive on this yet, but for now, that's what that will get. And then next I will put the shimmer scallop layer behind my cardstock layer. Do any of you have this shimmer vellum yet? It is so pretty. So I am just going to attach this right up to the side there and then I'll trim the excess off from the right side here. So I've got my little cutter handy. Okay. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. When you use scallops, do you like to end on full scallops or half scallops? I always like to end on partial scallops if I can, as opposed to full, unless it, there's just no hope for that and I have to go a little bit short with the scallop layer, shorter than what my the cardstock layer is, and then I'll do full ones. You'll see a project um, in the near future where I did the other method, but I try to do this. So what I'll do next is I'm going to reach this underneath here and tape it down. And then once this is in place, I'll actually reach back in with a piece of tape and place it underneath there to hold that vellum down a little bit better. But this way, by putting my border on first, then I would know where my tape underneath the vellum was going to go and I wouldn't accidentally end up with it in the wrong place. You just never know. Just one of those things I like to do for extra assurance that my layers will end up where I want them to be. Okay, so now that that's there, I'll come in behind here because I do still want to attach that vellum down a little bit better. And I will also still have twine wrapped around. You try to center it. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. All right, so now I've just got a piece of tape behind that border and now I can tape that down and that will stay nicely. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I am going to wrap around some white twine. Thank goodness we have white twine again. 
I stocked up on that stuff last year and hoarded it and then when it released in the spring catalog I blew through it because I figured well I can replace it again and so I'm very excited that it is going to be or it is in the new annual catalog so I can't find my one that's on the roll and I do still have a little bit from the old cardboard spools so this is going to have to do for the moment and I'm just running my nails along this twine to get those creases out because that's no fun when they end up right where you want to tie a bow. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what that was. Sometimes it works out nicely where they fall, but most of the time not. So I'm going to start, I know I want to tie my bow here, so it's right about the stem. So I'm leaving myself enough here to tie a bow and then I will wrap around and then I'll leave enough to tie the other end of the bow. So now that's good. And what's going to go on next is this little tag. So let's hope I stamp this correctly. <laughs> I have one tag ready to use. I did not prep a second one. So this is the new Fresh Freesia. Probably just made you all panic that I tipped that upside down right on top of my project after this mishap. I should just be extra careful and not be doing things like that. All right, so I have this little tag from the Meadow Dies, and I'm going to just stamp this on a little bit of an angle. Hopefully my head's not in your way. There we go, it worked out, thankfully. <laughs> you never know what you might get. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, now I will take this. I did forget to say to you guys, if you like this video and, uh, feel somebody else might too, and you are up for sharing, come back and comment that you have shared. And the winner of this week's share will get this card in the mail. So I will do that draw next week. Or I'll, I'll tally up anybody that shares over this next week. So I'm taking these two ends. I'm going to put this together. And this is coming through the hole of the tag. So both of those ends are through there. And then now I will stick, I should have put this little dimensional on first, but I put a little dimensional on the back of this little tag. This is a mini and I can just hold that twine. I want this little tag angled a little bit from there. So now that tag is going to hold all of this in place so I can tie my bow. I can't say tie my bow without thinking of tie bow, my friend Diana <laughs> that was here with us last week. She made a joke about how tie bow is the only exercise that she's doing while making cards. And so now every time I say tie a bow, I can't think, I can't not think of that. So Diana, if you're here, it still makes me laugh. All right, so now that'll hold my knot nicely in place while I tie this bow. Usually I stick a glue dot under the knot so that it stays nicely in place. But with this tag there, it will hold it nicely enough on its own. And if you guys notice there, I held my knot secure while I was cinching back the bows. I find when I do that, it helps prevent the, twi the, the loops from twisting up and then not laying flat. Hi, Zana. Thank you. It's almost 10 p.m. there. I can never keep track of the difference in time. And one day I would love to come to the UK. That is on my wish list, my travel wish list for when travel is safe again. One day I will get there. One day it will be safe again and we can all travel. All right, so this layer is pretty much ready. I just want to add this little butterfly. So I was talking about how when you attach vellum, Sometimes you can see the adhesive through it and you can still sort of see the little circle through there, but by using a punch of the same color, I was able to disguise the dimensional a little bit. So what I did was I took my glue dots again. I went and put those out of the way, but I do need them. So I took my little quarter inch circle. I stuck that to a glue dot. 
and then now I'm going to put it on the back of the butterfly like that and then now I can stick a little mini dimensional onto that circle and then this way when I put it on here you don't see the white popping through. So you do still see a little bit of a circle there, but to see the circle of the same color of cardstock as the vellum is a little bit less distracting than a full white dimensional. And I wanted this popped up so that it stood out just a little bit more. And then I'll take this layer and I will dimensional that down to the card base. So you can see it's pretty simple once you get that blending technique or the alcohol technique, it's pretty easy to do. The card's not that complicated other than, well, even the alcohol technique's not that complicated. You just gotta have some blends and make sure that you have the right alcohol. If you don't have parchment or wax paper, you could use just the straw. You could just drop alcohol in there and blow the alcohol around to mix. Um, I have seen Diana used a stamp and she stamped onto it with alcohol to mix it around. She also tried the um, parchment paper, but there's different ways that you can do it if you don't have parchment paper. So I'd love to see what you guys make. If you try this, you'll have to come back and post a photo of what you make. You could also step this up with bling, but um, yeah, you could probably color the dimensional. I wonder if it would work with it being sticky on one side. I wonder if you could even press it into your ink pad. That's something I'm going to have to try now because that quarter inch circle actually is not available anymore. It's just something I have in my collection. But now I'll need to try that. I'm glad you suggested it. All right, so that is my card. Just one casualty this year, but I will just gently take this layer off, put it on a new card base, and then it will be still good to use. All right, now, does anybody have any questions? So again, if you are up for sharing, please do come back and comment to let me know that you shared so that I know to count you in the draw. If you are interested in purchasing any of these products, then you can always shop on my website and use this host code here. If you are interested in joining the In Color Club, I might have a spot left. So this is not specifically what we're making this month, but we are featuring the um, color and contour bundle. So if you want to get in on that, then you can let me know. And I hope you guys all have a great weekend. We will be busy with our online sale. Again, if you are local or in Canada and you wanna join into that page so that you can shop our retired products, let me know and I'll get you added in there. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks for joining in this afternoon.